Hey, what's up team? This is Eddie Gray and we are back at it again. Complete 13 is out and potentially the most infamous plugin that a lot of people, a lot of musicians are looking forward to is Guitar Rig 6. So here I'm going to do a manual read through. I did a walkthrough of my last video and I wanted to thank a lot of the people that were on the comments section. I know I had some audio difficulties, but you know, the goal was just to give you a sense of what was in the plugin. Uh, one of the YouTubers said something like, um, can you import presets from Guitar Rig 5 to 6? And I answered them that you could, and I showed them the location of the folder. So I appreciate the love, and I appreciate uh, just all the comments and all the feedback. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Guitar Rig in full detail and we will be using the manual as a reference. So I've already done a lot of the work in advance and um, not sure how long the video will be. The manual is 200 pages. So we're gonna quickly kind of move along and get on with it, okay? So to start, I just wanna read um, the opener. Guitar rig is used to process audio from sources like guitar, bass, or any other instruments that you wanna experiment with it be it acoustic or electronic. For this purpose, Guitar Rig needs to receive audio signal from the source and make the process signal available for recording, playback, and listening at its output. Setting up Guitar Rig accordingly differs between the standalone application and the plugin. So you have some small things that differ between the standalone and the DAW version. Using the standalone application provides the most efficient way of essentially performing live if the, or practicing or something like that. If the computer is not used for recording, editing, and arranging the music, the standalone application turns it into a powerful, dedicated effects rack to process your instrument. To set up the standalone application, you need to configure its audio settings and the preferences. We will not be going over the standalone application, but essentially you just go into your preferences, set your inputs and your outputs, and you're all good to go. We will be using the DAW version, in my case the AU, but you might have a VST, making it an integral part of recording, editing, and arranging your music. Synchronizing and saving are handled by the DAW, and you benefit from your DAW's automation functionality to set up the plugin you need to make it available for your DAW load it into your track and route your instrument to the track logic does this for you automatically but some DAWs you need to specify one thing I will say is that you can set the tempo of or the BPM of guitar rig so that it differs slightly from your DAW's tempo so that's kind of nice if you want something to to drift off a little bit like a delay or some reverb um, and, and you want it to kind of feel a little bit different, then this is a good place to, uh, to do that. So um, here we go over the standalone application, and then we'll just do a quick overview of Guitar Rig. Again, I've done a lot of the work in advance. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is called the header, and the header is at the top of Guitar Rig, and it contains the main menu, audio input and output controls, so that is right up here. So if I click on these three dots, here I have some file options where I can import or create a new user preset. Here I have the ability to save a preset uh, or save as. And then once you create a user preset, and let's say you want to keep adding to it, then you would just continue to save. Here are the preferences. Okay, um, nothing too specific to talk about here. Maybe if you want to rescan your library, you can do that here. Uh, if we go to this icon here, we can eliminate the browser. So sometimes that can get a little bit distracting, right? You got all this stuff on your screen. This is called the view size, and you can change the size at which you're viewing Guitar Rig. So you gotta love that, it looks a lot better. And uh, here you have your inputs. This is um, the information going into Guitar Rig. So let's say I play. 
you can see I have some clipping here so I'm gonna bring down the input so I'm not hitting as hard now bear in mind this works in conjunction with the your preamp setting so if you have a, a Apollo or something like that and you're driving the input you might want to back off just to get a healthier signal so let me go ahead and do that off screen on console okay okay your gate is here if you don't have this on you're always gonna get that proverbial buzz that guitar players get this stuff all right if you just hit it and you set the threshold that will do a lot by way of just making it sound clean and professional you know if you're doing some palm muting or something okay so right now this might be set too low um, so this is a good way to set the threshold okay and uh, I'm looking at my buffer size all right if it gets out of control I'm gonna have to reset that but um, if you hit this button right here this automatically will learn the threshold for you as you're playing so so it just set it for me all right so that sounds good there I'm gonna go ahead and just change my buffer settings really quick I can kinda yeah I can sense that that might be a problem so I just want to be clear about that so Alright, so that sounds great. Here are your output settings. So if you want to put a limiter on there, you can. Never a bad idea. And then here you can see how much information is, you know, this taxing your computer. So I'm at 12% right now. Um, and then, of course, you can bypass the engine or turn it on if need be. So that is that. Let's go over the browser here on the left-hand side. They essentially have made this so it's turnkey and you can find anything, anywhere, anytime, any place. So if I go under presets and let's say I want to do something in the vein of blues, right? Now I've changed the results list from 103. Uh, I think I had over a thousand before. So now let's try something like uh, basic Chicago. So that sounds pretty nice. Let me raise up my threshold a little bit. There we go. All right. So um, that is pretty simple. Now, it's not just descriptive terms. You can use their own search filters. And by holding command, you can kind of get um, a better sense of, you know, uh, what you want. So let's say I want to process a guitar. Of course, you can process vocals or bass guitars or drums as well. I want an amp, I want it to have a filter, and uh, again, I'm holding command in order to do that. And then I want, uh, let's say I don't care about the amplifier, but I do care about the genres. Let's go alternative and ambient. All right, let's check out what we got. Whoa, Th that one sounds really tripped out. Let me go with something a little simpler. <laughs> Okay, so if we, whoa, <laughs> let me turn this off, hold on. So if we follow the, the trail, we got a guitar, amped, sounds filtered, alternative, and ambient. 
So you can see that this is a, a great way to search for sounds. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear the rack. You can see it's populated with all this stuff here, which I'll explain in a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and clear it. So with this trash button here on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and throw everything effectively in the trash. Now you might notice that these are not removed. Well, this is part of another uh, uh, part of the GUI. So we will go ahead and just bring them out like that. So let's keep it going here. As far as the components, these are the actual effects. So the presets are pre-configured, oh, pre-done, pre-made for you. So you can just plug and play and look for the appropriate sound. Um, something I should mention before I go to the components is not only can you use a search filter, but you can actually favorite your own sounds, user presets, or presets that you're always going to use, you know, out of the a thousand sounds that are available, you know, let's say you're always using um, high gain breather, which is the very first one here, well, then you would control click it and then you would select the appropriate um, color. So let's just say you always use Fusia for rock music and for, you know, hip hop or whatever you use, Plum. So you, that would be the way you would filter this out. And then when you wanted rock tones, you would just click on that. Very similar to the Apple system, the tagging system. It works quite well. I know Ableton is using it now too. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty basic um, components. You can drag and drop, or if you want, you can just double click and it'll show up at the bottom of the rack here. Let's see, anything else worth noting? Uh, search filter, all this stuff is the same, so no need to cover that again. Um, so that is pretty basic. Let's go back to the manual. We talked about everything else. You can also change the view size here if you want to uh, you know, expand the GUI or you want to close it up a little bit so you've got the track or rack view, if you will, on the bottom right, and then here you have the view size, which you can change just by clicking and then selecting your choice. Uh, everything else is good. Uh, we talked about all this. Signal flow, you might want to look into this. Your left input, stereo input, and right input. From, in the most cases, you'll be able to just plug and play and it won't really matter. I covered the entire GUI and we're just grazing through this. If you really want to understand it, you know, take some time to read it, but I, I did go over everything that was necessary for you to just get started. Um, talked about using the search field, favoriting, so that's all pretty basic. Um, you can also tag your own user presets. So let's say you, you created something that's uh, you know, worth it. Then you can go ahead and save it by clicking here and then naming the preset, whatever it is that you would want to name it. And then after that, you can actually change its tags by clicking on the info tab and then writing. This is a read only as this is a preset, but in general, you'd be able to create your own user presets and tag them appropriately. Now, if you're somebody that plays a lot of guitar and you're somebody that needs a system to stay organized, I think this is definitely a nice fit for you. So um, again, this is all stuff we've covered. I want to get into, I guess, one more notable thing worth mentioning. Once, let's say you create and um, you, you search out, you know, a track by, you know, selecting a bunch of tags. At the bottom here where it says curated, you can actually select um, how you want to look at the results. Do you want to look at them in alphabetical order, in reverse alphabetical order, or by uh, those that are curated? So we can find that here. Sorts the results list in the order curated by the sound designer. So I guess you can think about this like time base, like whoever turned in their presets first. Um, so anyway, just check that out. Again, this stuff is neither here nor there, not really that important. Um, all right, so loading presets, again, pretty basic. 
you just double click if you want to just shuffle through presets you can use the up and down menu here okay so that is privy again saving user presets if you want to update you can save by hitting the little floppy drive right next to that again if you want to import user presets this is the place to do it let me go ahead and zoom in let you guys take a quick screenshot awesome all right managing your user presets you can do that as well um I'm trying to get to stuff that's a little bit more important. We talked about searching th through the components. Um, I should say that the components themselves have presets inside of them. So you see this right and left arrow menu, you can kind of search through it. So if you have, uh, like I just brought up cat, this is going to have presets inside of it. Okay, just want to make sure you guys understand that. So presets inside here. Okay, let me go and throw all this stuff in the trash and let me bring in uh, clear ambiance. Awesome. All right, so now we're talking about the rack. Everything is fairly easy to understand. I think the most important is a part is called the toolbar. So we talked about the, the top space here already. We kind of covered that in full detail. Now let's talk about the toolbar. Okay, so we know we can search the presets. We know that we can shuffle and select a random preset. We can save as, we can save and update a currently existing user preset. But now we're getting to the important stuff. So let me go ahead and just play and get to know the sound. <laughs> and then I'll add a component. Let's do reverb. Um, I want to do something real big. Let's do, oh yeah, this is nice. So why am I not hearing it as much? certainly on ah that's funny I had turned it off up here earlier so just be careful because if you turn that off you're not gonna hear anything so all right cool let me uh, back off of the uh, wet dry signal So this is a really nice ambient reverb here. And that's pretty much as far as setting it up. Let's say we're happy with the input, the output. We like the preset itself. We've saved it. Now we go into turning on your macros and assigning them if you need them. So what does this look like? Well, let's say you want something where um, you can control the level of the mix. So let me go ahead and grab this. And these macros are really easy to uh, sign up, which I really like. And then you can control the range from left to right here, which is really cool. So like maybe if I don't want that much, you know, I just want it like from here to here, I can control that. And then on top of that, we're going to assign this also to modulation. Again, incredibly easy to change as well if um, you want to bypass it you can just do that okay and then uh, I believe there's a way to actually change these oh yeah you would just replace them so like if I don't want modulation and I want um, let's th hold on let's think of something else to get hold on it's um, so maybe I would want this one Oh yeah, I think you grab it from here, and then let's do the reverb amount. You can see that I that I changed it, and I um, 
replaced it, right? So then I'm going to go and change the modulation. Okay, so by just rotating this one knob, I can change all three of these at the same time. Again, I get to decide the range, and the range can also be inverted. You want to start high and go low, so this is really helpful. So let's play with this. Um, Really nice, easy workflow, macros are sweet. All right, this one is amazing too. Let me go ahead and select another preset for this so I can record something. Um, let's just use, I've been using this one a lot because it's, uh, well, it's the first one and just easy. Um, let's say I want to remove that tag. I just control click and now I've removed it. And so then now I want to record myself in effect. And, um, you can do this for several reasons. Let me go ahead and just track myself. You want to hit record and then hit play. <laughs> Right, hit record and then now once I hit play all right we're hearing the signal okay and if I want to hear it at the output it should sound clean now what if I want to try another preset let's try another preset here we go right and so that's a nice little tool to have it's also a way for you to try out different ideas. Let's say we, we wanted to try the same idea, but maybe transpose it down. So this is one way to do that. Maybe you're playing in, um, in drop C tuning, but your guitar is tuned to D and you just want it to sound deeper, you know? You can pull that off like that. And then you have the ability to tune in fine sense, which is nice. And then on top of that, you can create a loop and then set the, the starting point and then the end point. So you could just do that uh, depending on how you want to do it. You could do it manually by moving it or as you press play. As you press play, you would just hit the left or right marker. So this is all sweet. Looks like you can save user presets here as well. Uh, I'm sorry, you can save the information. So that makes sense. And by the way, if you ever want to learn anything inside of a lot of contact plugins like if you just hold it's not doing it here but uh i've noticed that in a lot of contact oh well maybe that's it we're not in contact but anyway um contact is really good that way where like if you just hover over a um uh preset or, or a configuration rather um It'll, it'll tell you the, the, the parameter, so that's some good stuff there. All right, let's get back into it. Um, see, we're talking about the toolbar. So then you've got a tuner here. Let me go ahead and tune back to EADGBE. tuners there you can mute it so that you're just tuning and not listening to it um, you can tell it hey I'm tuning a guitar per tuning as well here's a tuning fork which I actually like all right and then if you don't like this way to tune you can use the strobe as well so uh, you've got a metronome, which is always helpful. If you want to practice, you don't have to mute it. You can play it out. 
can tap your own BPM here. Lots of good stuff. Determine the volume. This is my favorite part. Preset volume. I can have a balance of the preset and the dry sound. So this is uh, a high gain breather. Let's say I like the sound, but it's just too heavy. Let me go halfway. Again, let's say I want to go clean for the verses. If I have this all the way up, look how loud it, this is. So sometimes you're going to want to back off that gain. And this is all MIDI uh, configurable. So I can learn this with, you know, one of the knobs on my, my synthesizer, my complete control, um, or, or any MIDI information. And then you can, you know, uh, adapt it over time. So you got to love that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, that is, is definitely my favorite feature. I don't know if this was in Guitar Rig 5. I doubt it. I spent some time with it, but not much. And then here we have a tape deck post, but for after. So it's not pre, it's in post. So we're going to learn what that does in a quick second. And then finally here at the end, you have global effects, um, which will allow you to add some effects um, at the end of the chain. So let's look into this uh, tape deck post. Uh, one sec, we talked about deleting components. You can drag and drop, or you can just uh, control click and you know uh, delete the selected. We can replace just by hovering over. You can move by click and dragging the uh, components. So you could do that kind of thing, All right? You can control click, delete. Let's keep going here, the rack tool. So I want to explain number six and number seven. So again, we talked about reassigning assignments and deactivating assignments. Uh, we talked about the macro controllers. Here's the tape deck. The first one says here it can be used for recording and playing back the rack input signal. Okay, let me turn this down a little bit. And, um, now what I'm interested in is this guy. So again, it's the same tool. Additionally, you can import audio files into the tape deck post and play them back as an unprocessed backing track. So I'm still kind of figuring out exactly why you would use this, but uh, I talked about all the various buttons in here, syncing to the, to the host. Um, let's see, synchronizes the transport of the Tape Deck Pre and Tape Deck Pro. When activated, the play and stop buttons of either Tape Deck Control, both Tape Decks simultaneously. So let me get this straight. If I press, let's see if I pressed, where's the, where's this guy? Okay, so if I hit sync and I press play on my DAW, Not, not seeing it play. I'm wondering what's uh, what's going on there. Maybe I have to hit play. Mm, that seems weird. All right, so yeah, still a little unclear on what is that supposed to do. If you guys know in the comments, go ahead and hit me up. Let me know exactly what the purpose of having these two. I mean, I understand recording. That makes sense. But is this supposed to be a creative tool that you can um, that you can use while you're you know, playing back a song or performing live. You can use this to create overdubs by playing back a previously recorded file. Okay, well that makes sense there, right? Play on top of the playback and recording the result in tape deck post. All right, well that makes sense. If I have this guitar here and then I want to record uh, onto this guitar, let me see if that, if that changes a couple things. Hold on. Let me hit record. All right, so I was just trying to get, get, turn the guitar on. Let's see, let's see if this sounds like anything. Let me. Okay, so that's great. 
that makes a lot of sense um if you're just trying to record ideas and get a sense of if you know some harmonies would work so um i won't take the time to do that now because there's definitely plenty to cover overall but yeah you can record yourself and then create double guitars nice all right we talked about the tuner that all works the metronome um there is a button that i did uh not bring up so let me just do that now this little button right here is called the expert panel so if you ever see this anywhere this is going to give you more information so this could be in a effect or an amp or what have you that's what that means the button up here is going to collapse the component and then of course this will just bypass whatever it is you have selected. Let me go ahead and throw everything away here. Um, turn off all of this stuff and let's move on. All right, so preset volume, again, the difference between wet and dry, my absolute favorite thing to do here. Let's read one of these, let me zoom in. Changes the routing and behavior of the mix control. When set to post, the mix control uses its default routing and behavior, blending the input signal of the guitar rig into the process effect signal from the rack. When set to pre, the mix control splits the input signal before the rack, adjusting both the level of the dry signal that bypasses the rack and the level of the wet signal that is processed by the rack. Since this affects the input level of the rack, the sound components can change, in particular when using amplifiers and distortions. So this is going to change the way that the uh, effects are processed, so just be hip to that. Um, global effects. This is one that I'm still working on here, so let's go ahead and read this. They're independent of the loaded preset. So that means that you'll have a preset with a bunch of different racks, and then if you want to add a little bit of reverb after the fact on top, you can, but it's not necessarily being influenced or processed by that which is in the rack. Therefore, you can use the global effects to set up an effects chain that finalizes and polishes the sound of any preset that you load. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. You got a preset menu here. You can go ahead and trash the uh, global effects or clear them. And then if you want to show the content, you can hit that button and that will collapse it um, or show it. All right, so we've got tools. The components in the tools provide auxiliary functions that you use to change the rack signal flow in creative ways. All right, so this is next level. Definitely haven't seen this before. Um, so you can nest the components within containers and splitters or even splitters within splitters. Okie dokie. So number one is the container. I wonder if this is kind of like macros, but container indicator, thin blue line on the left side indicates the extent of the container and its content. Okay. So the way everything's routed, I suppose. Number two is the Splitter indicator, the thin color lines on the right side of the rack indicate the extent and hierarchical level of splitters in the rack, starting with mint, plum, pink, red, up to four levels of splitting are shown at the side of the rack. Mint, plink, okay, good. Shows a signal path of splitters, including the hierarchy of nested splitters. That's number three, so how this is being routed. Okay, to find the container, go into the components and just drag it in. And so you'll notice there's a lot of presets here. So let's just keep reading. So this tool features special visualization in the rack that helps you maintain an overview of the structure. All right. Allows you to create powerful multi-effects by combining multiple components controlled by up to 16 container macros you can use it to organize your rack more clearly or to conveniently reuse your favorite combination of effects in different racks so those, let's just say you use a delay a lot or or you really like a certain reverb for a certain style of music this would be a great way to to, to keep that organized so you can use it in various sounds so number one is the macro layout selector. So let's go here. We can select which macros. 
we're using. Number two is to, you want to clear that container. Number three, again, expert panel. Four is show the content. Let's look at that. So you can see that I've added a compressor, a delay, and a vintage verb with this specific preset. If I select another preset, now this one has some new components. Let me go ahead and open it. So you see how this is being routed, right? Let's listen to it. Try one more. Sounds really nice. All right, number five, macro control itself. And then number six, the expert panel that you would open up by hitting that button right there. So there's a lot here by way of uh, controlling how it is you want this to work. And so, let's see, what page are we on? <laughs> We're on page 52, there's like 200 pages. So we'll just take it one step at a time here, but um, frequency crossover is a splitter that divides the frequency spectrum into two bands that each feed their own effects chain. You can add components to the low and high band independently and freely adjust the crossover frequency that separates the bands. Now that's pretty cool. We, we never really had that kind of control before, so you gotta love that. Additionally, each of the bands can be panned in the stereo image each of the bands can be panned. So you can have the low stuff panned a little far left and then the high stuff on the right, further increasing the creative potential. All right, makes sense. All right, high band, pan low, crossfade, awesome. Split mix is a sp splitter that feeds the input into two parallel effects chains. You can add components to the A and B path independently and freely adjust both the panning. Okay, we just talked about that. The split mix contains the following parameters and controls. So there's a lot here with how you're going to split the mix. There's mid side balance. All right, it's pretty awesome. Okay. Let's keep going here. modifiers so I didn't before we move on here I didn't see any specific um, instruction on how to create these splitters and how all of that works mm, maybe it gets into it a little bit later but I just don't see any uh, specific instruction there so let's keep moving um, yeah, like where do you get this information? Is it under the expert? Nope, I don't see it. Okay, so there's this, well, I see how it's, yeah, I just don't know how to access this, whatever this view is. So anyway, let's keep it going. Modifies are modulation sources that you can use to control any parameter in the, ra in the rack. They do not generate or process sound, but instead provide a variety of functions to automatically adjust controls over time. Yep, this makes a lot of sense. Of course, you would use it in a plugin like this. Like on a synthesizer, the available modulation sources include an envelope, an LFO, and sequencers. Additionally, the input level modifier can be used as an envelope follower that tracks the input signal and transforms it into a modulation source. All right, so these modifiers, you can dr just drag and drop them. 
So um, the analog sequencer, I guess you would find that here. All right, and it looks like everything in blue. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, let me, let me just trash all this one sec. Let me find a nice preset. Let's do. We've been on this kick, so why don't we get that? And then I'll drag in the envelope. Okay. So. Let's say we attach that to the filter. Okay, maybe I'll attach it to the high pass as well, see what that sounds like. Okay, not really hearing it too much there. Um, let's go to frequency. See what that sounds like. And then maybe I'll just change the ADSR. Let's do something like this. Yeah, again, not getting too much here. Maybe you got to put it at the beginning of the chain. Let's check it out. Okay. Um didn't say anything about the order. Just says you can drag a modulation source. Got a sequencer as well. So uh, let's drag this guy in. Maybe I'll put it at the end of the chain. See if it helps. Again, not thoroughly understanding um, why I'm not getting any sound, but maybe I'll just try them by themselves. Let's see. Okay, I see what's going on. It has to be connected to something. So let me drag this to the tone cut. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah. Okay, so on top of that, I'll use, what was that other one called? Envelope. Yeah, let's drag this guy in. And so maybe we'll do this where we're just having a long decay. Take six seconds. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, I have to have this connected to something, so let's do, how about the depth of the tremolo? Let's check it out. Okay, maybe I could do like a slower, yeah, like a more subtle. All right, let's see what this sounds like. All right, that's pretty sweet. You don't hear the tremolo, and then at the very end, it starts coming in. All right, so that's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, the only thing that that you know I'm kind of confused about just is how to set this guy up. Is it the same thing? Are you just like okay? I'm gonna bring in this modifier. Yeah, it looks like it is actually. 
uh, although it's not letting me actually move it right now. Um, maybe it has to be at the end of the sequence, I would imagine. Let's try this. Nah. So again, I think this is buggy. If you guys have any comments about this, please let me know. But it seems like this one is a little funny. Again, I could be wrong. Um, just trying to figure out. <laughs> maybe it's like self-contained where, yeah, maybe that's what it is. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So there you go. This is how you figure things out. You know, you read the manual, you make some uh, some efforts, and then you just you just try it out. So yeah, then now I'm gonna take this and adjust it to the yeah, let's do time already assigned. Yeah, let's go ahead and assign it anyway. So this is just like a macro, except somewhere down the road you have. 16 of them whenever you're ready for all that and then there's a lot you can do by way of splitting and doing all that again uh, not there yet but we're making progress so we got the analog sequencer which you can set up which I think sounds really really nice like the envelope too so we're just adding modulation sources to the uh, the guitar so that's pretty amazing uh, you got input level generates a control signal based on the incoming input level. This is commonly called an envelope follower. As the signal tracks changes in amplitude, the most common application for this is to control filters. This is already built into the auto filter component. However, a subtle use of this modifier can be used to make components like the amplifier sound much more realistic. Hmm. I find it funny that they use the word realistic. I wonder why that's the case. Um, anyway, try out the input and see uh, if it's uh, if it's worth it. Let's check it out real quick. I'll just put in a preset. Oh wait, again, this is a modifier, so I don't know. Let's try this out. Oh. Okay, I see what they're saying. This lets the, the guitar playing breathe. So it's really nice in that sense that you can go ahead and create something a lot more authentic and realistic. So the attack sets how long the tone control signal takes to reach its target value. You can sidechain allow the user to trigger the envelope with an external source. Auto must be activated to use sidechain. All right, cool. How can you set this to an external source? I think they meant internal. Or I guess they, yeah, I guess maybe depending on what it is you're selecting. Um, you know, I come from the in the box world. So like, I'm always thinking sidechain. How, how do I sidechain this to something else? But all right, we're moving on. You got some LFOs that you can work with here. Again, outside the scope of this, um, but you can play with that. Step sequencer. Uh, did we not cover that earlier? Um, so that's cool as well. Oh, right. The other one was called analog sequencer. So this is a little bit different, huh? All right. Let's go ahead and uh, trash all this. Let's grab another preset. Let's grab this guy. And then let's get the uh, step sequencer and see what that sounds like. I will grab this and let's see. Let's go the tone. <laughs> Raise up the steps. Let's do just four steps.
I actually do like this a lot. I like the fact that you can find modulation sources with different controllers um, and that it's easy. Uh, looks like you could sidechain to an external audio signal to control components independently of the input signal. So that's pretty sweet. This is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, so we have sidechaining functionality. The following components can sidechain. So you can use all the various compressors, the auto filter, the freak, and the envelope LFO input level. All right, so we're side chaining now. Standalone application. Let's keep moving here. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. All right, got a bunch of keyboard shortcuts available to us as well. So you can go over those on your own if you want to. And um, here in section 16, go over all the amplifiers, the AC boxes all the buttons therein. Um, the expert panel gives you, of course, a bunch of information. Um, GR5 mode activates backwards compatibility for presets made in Guitar 5. That's pretty cool. All right, we've got a uh, bunch of different models for bass. So that's all here. Here's the orange emulation. Again, be sure to use that expert mode so you can get some more information here's the white face this looks like a um, Mesa boogie uh, cool here's a Marshall and so it looks like they start going over all of the details in regards to these amps so I will let you enjoy that on your own here are all the various cabinets. Choose among five outstanding guitar cabinets and up to eight classic microphones to create a unique blend of tonal characteristics. The model setup is the outcome of decades of recording experience. Each cabinet is paired with perfectly chosen and positioned microphones, which are all in phase, of course, so you can mix them as you please. Be sure to check out the component presets as they offer some classic tones. So This is called Control Room. Let me go ahead and just check this out really quick. Oh, and then you have Pro. Wonder what the, what's the difference. high end air here let me go ahead and trash all this bring in just control room pro let's bring in another preset Wow, so it's like the idea that you're miking various amplifiers with various microphones and you can kind of change the position of them. Uh, I would assume that's what this is about, right? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, so that would take a lot of, you know, playing with to get to know, but that's pretty amazing. Wasn't expecting all that. Um, so that's all pretty basic. Uh, I wonder what the next step in the control room is here. Okay, so it looks like you just have more options. 29 cabinets, a DI, uh, limited set of sounds in control room of the recording process. Cool, a multi-set of microphones are also an off from the old school to the high-tech stuff. Cool, so this is just kind of souped up. Um, you can match your cabinets go through all the various delays here all right let me see if there's anything particularly worth looking at um, yeah, let's keep going so there's a quad delay let's uh, type in delay let me 
Yeah, let's play with the quad delay. All right, this takes the input signal and plays it back through four delayed stages distributed to the stereo channels, allowing for impressive modulation possibilities. The output can be fed back to the input, producing a series of echoes. Sweet. Got dry wet. You can set the time. Um, you can let me go ahead and just pick a preset to start. Uh, let's go a wash. Let me tap my own. All right, you can do this per musical time or per um, just regular time. Let's go feedback. You can mute it here. Okay, change the rate and the depth of the effect. Again, as soon as you start playing with, with some of these, what ends up happening is that you just start to get a feel for all of them. So you just kind of you know need to get your time in and you'll start learning them. Uh, looks like we have some expert controls. Let's bring those in. You can sync your delays. So we've got um, the ability to invert changes the phase affecting the elimination of frequencies in the mix of dry and process signal. The result is particularly noticeable with short delays. Well, this is not a short delay, so let me go ahead and shorten it. I did not hear a difference. Let me know if you guys think otherwise. Uh, let's see, diffusion, bass, yup, that all, what's diffusion? Controls how much the delay time is spread out between the four stages. Turning it up creates a stereo effect with four distinct delays. So let's turn it all the way up. Let me hear this. Uh, hold on. Let me turn this down. So let's see here. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's listen to it mostly diffused. I just kind of hear it going ping pong back and forth. Uh, so you've got a tape echo emulation as well. Uh, this one looks pretty detailed. Uh, You've got a delay. Tractor's delay is a classic delay with additional functionality, including the freeze function for infinite delay repetitions. So uh, I got to try that real quick. Just one sec. Sweet. Um, all right, let's keep going. Twin delay, bunch of distortions. Historically, one of the first guitar effects is still the essential element of many popular guitar sounds today, of course. Generally inserted between the guitar and the amp. So if you're going to design your own stuff, you might want to think about that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. It's a good one. Distortion and overdrive components of Guitar Rig 5 are accurate reproductions of classic hardware devices. Therefore, just like the originals, these effects can sound somewhat thin and artificial by themselves. Use them with an app cabinet combination to create a stronger sound.
Hmm, I wonder if they meant six. Uh, but anyway, big good. All right, we got bite, which is a uh, fairly new effect, part of the native family. Uh, what is cat? If you want a responsive distortion, the cat is your component of choice. All right, I will see to that. Let's go to the cat. Bring this in. Boom. Let's see what this sounds like. So this reminds me of the emulation of the raw plugin that UAD does. I don't know what the actual model is in quote unquote real life, but anyway, it sounds pretty gnarly. I dig it. Uh, got a lot of latency on my side, so I'm just going to play super basic here. Definitely like it. Dirt. What else we got? More distortions. You got fuzzes. A gain booster for insane amounts of overdrive or to compensate for setting that reduced the level. So if you have a compressor or something. What is this guy? Pure metal. Check out Mizone or Mezone. Got to check this out real quick. Hold on. Set up a quick preset. That doesn't necessarily sound metal to me. Um, Let's keep it going. Um, so it looks like we might just go into all of the effects. So this is a lo-fi, so big crusher here, sledgehammer, clear its way through a mix. This effect is not subtle. <laughs> it will give you as much presence as you need. So that's cool. You're going to play a lead or something. What's Mahal and Drive? Combines two overdrive units, can add a tonal character to, char character to the distortion, or even turn the effect into a sound generator. All right, I will take you up on that. Let's check it out. Mall Holland. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, collapse that one and select a preset. I'll do it this way. Uh, let's do burnt. Try one more. <laughs> All right, cool. So um screamer this is a legend the ibanez screamer uh cool transamp i think this is really good for bass from what i remember yeah cool sounds on the verge to distortion and biting let's keep it going here the treble booster you got some compressors coming up limiters noise gates uh i thought the noise gate they had here was pretty amazing looks like they have a couple more maybe if you're adding a bunch of effects there's a gator, noise gate, yeah, a couple different things here. 
Volume pedal. That's pretty sweet. Wasn't expecting that one. Um, volume pedal. Wait, is that is that as simple as? Oh, okay. I thought it was like an actual, you know, where you can uh, express yourself with volume. But no, this is you're just literally boosting. Uh, cool noise reduction. Again, their gate works pretty well. You got the native instruments, solid dynamics, solid bus compressor. You've got a stomp compressor. Provides a different type of compression compared to tube. So tighter and cleaner if you want to tighten up a performance. Never a bad idea, especially if you're playing like real funky stuff. In fact, let me just type this in real quick. Stomp compressor. Let's see if we can get this going. So without that compressor, see how it doesn't sound as tight, right? So that's just gonna give it a little bit of that tightness. Uh, and I'm sure it works really well with distortion. You're doing palm muting and stuff like that. Never a bad idea. Got a bunch of EQ team. Again, not gonna go over this. I would say this is probably one of the only ones I will go over, uh, the auto filter. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Cool. Yeah, thank you guys very much for your support. Uh, this is what it's all about. Just growing, learning, being more, having more. So thank you very much. Um, all right, let's try out. All right, so essentially equalizers that are tailored for a specific purpose. Uh, so it's filters and wall wall pedals that would allow you to create sweeps and resonances for a great effect. Auto filter is a multiband filter that responds to the dynamics of your playing. This effect is very popular in funk and disco. Okay, so sense is going to control the sensitivity of the auto filter. So let's go like super big on this. Now, I'm playing kind of soft. What happens if I play harder? Which direction do you want it to go? Okay. Um, up or down. If you set it to down, the filter sweeps down to a lower frequency. Of course, you set to up, sweeps up. Um, you could play with the range, the resonance. What does range do? Sets the width of the filter sweep. Turn clockwise to sweep over a wider range. Yeah, let's go really wide. See what happens. Let's do resonance really high. Maybe really low. Yeah, so if you want that real bubbly, warbly sound. Man, I'm playing like five seconds ahead and it's just, it's working. I'm able to like just switch something in my brain and it works. All right, uh, you got a wah pedal, pretty sweet. Uh, appeared in the late 1990s, Rage Against the Machine. Um, got a Foreman filter as well, that's pretty sweet. Would not expect that. But again, this is not just for guitar, so that's uh, to be noted. Let me see if I could turn this guy on for a little bit. <laughs> Uh, 
it sounds like it's filtering it out. I don't really hear anything too uh, special about that. Ooh, a Moog filter bank. Hang tight. Anytime you see a Moog, you got to stop, right? Here we go. Let's see what this does. Okay, so this looks just like a... Pretty cool. Um, just the filter, more wah pedals, a peak filter. Man, they have so many different effects. Uh, I'm just going to skip through this whole bit. Got a bunch of effects here. Rotator, Freak, another one of those NI plugins, Phaser 9. Uh, man, kudos to whoever wrote this. Uh, ooh, a pitch pedal. This is interesting. Um, yeah, that this manual is no joke. I want to see what this does. In fact, hold on. Let me just trash all this. Bring this in. If this is what I think it is. All right. So that's pretty sweet. Wasn't expecting that. Can be used for a nice little chorus. All right, pretty stoked about that. Uh, basically, has the same effect as a guitar's vibrato tail piece, except that all the strings stay in tune as you bend them up or down. Controlling the pitch shift with a controller pedal is highly recommended. Um, so this is a really big like in metal and stuff. So let's just say I have that and then I select that. I'm gonna have to do this with my hands, but. You know, where you're going like. So that's a pretty cool effect. I wonder if you could invert it so that it goes up instead of down because right now it's going down that would be interesting but um oh maybe in the uh, expert view here we go oh yeah there it is right there let's go up by 12. i am i'm a fan guys really nice uh rezo chord what is that Transpose stretch, ice verb, spring reverb, We're going into the reverb and delay world. Let's keep going. Studio reverb, man, so many different grain, ring modulator, the beat slicer. Captures a loop. Okay, hold on. Let me, I got to check this one real quick. Um, loop slicer. Wait, did I miss this one? Hold on, loop. Hmm. Wait, it seems like it's like. Hold on, a. Hmm. Oh, is it called beat slicer? <laughs> I was looking for loop slicer. All right, here we go. Let's uh drag. Let's see. How does this work? I don't see any modifiers or anything. Oh. 
Let me read on here. Uh, captures a loop from the incoming audio and manipulates it by rearranging slices into the variety of rhythmic patterns. All right, well, how, how do you know what to feed it? Uh, all right, well, this one didn't really make any sense to me. I'm not sure like where, how to get the information in there. Let's go fragmented. All right, I'm going to move on. If it's not like easy to use out of the gate, then I'm good. Speaking of gate, let's try this gator. Uh, might want to trash all this real quick. Oh, that's sweet. All right, cool. I'm a fan of that as well. Reverse grain, some ring mods. Is there anything? Oh, I'm just seeing, hold on. I'm just seeing like blank now. Is, is this it? Oh, geez. I guess we are at the end. I thought there was 200 pages. Let me double check this. I was ready for the long haul team. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess here we are. All right, well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Uh, super happy to be talking about music every day, learning about music and uh, pitching music and just having a great time. Uh, my name is Eddie Gray with HF Music Academy. Thank you for signing up and, and for checking out the channel and for checking out this amazing uh, program with us. Uh, if you like the content, go ahead and like and subscribe. We'll definitely see you on the next chapter where we're going to cover a lot more content. So anyway, we'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Cheers.